Hello and welcome everyone and today we are going to do two numericals one on the calculation of design wind load and other for the calculation of ductility and percentage elongation. So let us begin with the wind load calculation and see why I am considering only wind load calculation. Why not others load? Because actually we have never done this wind load calculation throughout our courses and either we will do if we do not do it right now and uh, earthquake uh, load calculation we usually do in the last semester so let us begin how it is being calculated and this is little uh, based on more parameters depending on the situation scenario so many things many constants has to be provided into this and of course you have to be very expert in choosing all the constants and parameters from the is code also so the basic formula for calculating design wind speed vz is given in the is 875 as vz is equal to vb into k1 into k2 into k3 vz is the design wind speed in meter per second and vb is the basic mean speed in any area in meter per second and k1 k2 k3 are three constants and they depends on the depending situations and scenario so k1 is called probability factor k2 is called terrain height and structure size factor and k3 is called topography factor actually if you see k2 depends on the height of the structure also so for a building if it is very high then at the lower floors k2 will be something different whereas at the high floors k2 will be something different so what is this bv vb is the basic wind speed and this is the map of india which is showing basic wind speed if you look at isn't it it is provided in the is code also and you can see the entire country has been divided into six zones of winds and these are the depending on the color scheme you can see for each zone basic wind speed in meter per second is given 55 50 47 44 39 and 33 okay so if you locate your own city dehradun it comes almost nearby yellow and green region we take somewhere here and if we are confused then we can go directly to the table and table is also provided like this is the table appendix a and this provides basic wind speed also for Im some important cities and towns so in this we locate our own city and town dehradun so here it is dehradun and for dehradun what is the wind speed okay so this is uh, 47 similarly we can locate for any city or town what is the basic wind speed okay and then comes the k1 k2 and k3 k1 is the probability factor or risk coefficient this i have just taken this snapshot from the is code and if you are not able to see it very clearly then you can look from here also the k1 factor for basic wind speed now different wind speed zone is there so this is 33 meter per second zone 39 44 meter per second 47 meter per second 50 meter per second 55 meter per second zone and for these each zones the value of k1 will be different now what is this different classes of a structure see there are different classes of a structure a b c d like that and the all general buildings and structures and this class of a building depends on the design life of a structure like few structures have very less design life whereas uh, a few structure have very high design life like general buildings and structure are kept in mind that they will be having a design life of 50 years so for those structure k1 will be one okay all general buildings Whereas for temporary sets structure as those made during construction operations frameworks like that whose mean probable design life is only 5 years for them the K1 factor is even very less you know? whereas a buildings and a structure presenting a low degree of hazard to life and property in event of failure 
such as isolated towers in wooded areas farm buildings other than residential buildings whose design life is only 25 years they have little hair but again less than one okay so these parameters are easy to understand whereas there will be few important buildings and a structure such as hospitals railway station communication buildings towers colleges and power plant structures for them here it is written 100 years and for them we keep higher risk coefficient higher than one okay i hope you are able to understand it next comes the k2 factor and k2 factor is also very easy to understand and as i said you k2 is the terrain factor for different terrains terrains are also of category 1 terrain category 2 terrain category 3 terrain category 4 and all these terrain category are not very difficult to understand whereas k2 depends on the structure's height like if you see the height of a structure is 10 meter then at that for terrain 1 the value of k2 is 1.05 and if you go up to 300 meter height of the structure the value of k2 will be high okay 1.35 for the same terrain why it is so because if you go high if you go up the wind speed will to sort to increase so at different floors the value of k2 is also different okay so for time being we assume for calculation of wind load at a certain floor only now let us see what are these terrain category 1 terrain category 2 3 and 4 respectively terrain category 1 are those uh, terrains in which uh, our structure is exposed with a few or no obstructions almost no obstruction is there and in which the average height of any object surrounding the structure is less than 1.5 meter only okay so now it is very clear ki hamare structure ke charu taraf koi bhi aisa structure nahi hai jo ki 1.5 meter se zyada uncha hai theek hai and those structure includes open sea coasts and flat treeless plains means deserts or fields okay uh, if you see category 2 category 2 is the, the open terrain with well scattered obstructions there are obstructions but they are scattered having height generally between 1.5 meter and 10 meter these are generally in the villages okay such uh, terrains are in the air fields open park lands undeveloped sparsely built up outskirts villages suburbans whereas terrain category 3 are those terrains where numerously closely spaced obstructions like the in the town and cities you see obstructions are very closely spaced and having the size of building a structure up to 10 meter in height with or without a few in isolated tall structures either 10 meter or larger than 10 meter how much floor can be adjusted in 10 meter it is about three floor buildings that can come uh, in the range of 10 meter height buildings so this uh, category of terrain includes well wooded areas shrubs towns and industrial areas fully or partially developed okay the next terrain is the terrain category 4 and now here it is said terrains with numerous large high closely spaced obstructions and here they includes large city centers like dubai singapore and uh, shanghai like those cities generally with obstructions larger than 25 meter and well developed industrial complexes so we can understand this terrain category 4 uh, will be almost improbable in most of the cases uh, that's why i have written here it is likely that the next higher category than this will not exist in most design situations okay most of the design situations come up to terrain category 3 only and that selection of a more severe category will be deliberate it depends on the choice of the person okay now what we see in all these four terrains now what will happen if the height of the obstruction keep on increasing around a structure then of course the bend will be obstructed isn't it the wind will be obstructed and in category 1 there will be large probability of wind being striking the structure in category 2 less wind will be striking the structure and in category 3 even less wind will be striking the structure and in category 4 there is even more less 
चांस ऑफ विंड स्ट्राइकिंग द स्ट्रक्चर सो द वैल्यू ऑफ के टू इज इंक्रीजिंग एज वी मूव टूवर्ड्स लो टेराइन कैटेगरीज वेयर एज द वैल्यू ऑफ के टू इज अगेन इंक्रीजिंग इफ वी मूव टूवर्ड्स द ग्रेटर हाइट ऑफ द बिल्डिंग इन एनी टेराइन कैटेगरीज ओके देन कम्स द टोपोग्राफी के थ्री फैक्टर एंड दिस इफेक्ट ऑफ टोपोग्राफी विल बी सिग्निफिकेंट एट अ साइट वेन द अप विंड स्लोप द स्लोप ऑफ द विंड अप विंड स्लोप थीटा इज ग्रेटर देन थ्री डिग्री सो एंड बिलो दैट द वैल्यू ऑफ के थ्री इज गोइंग टू बी इक्वल टू वन ओके and the value of k3 is confined in the range of 1.0 to 1.36 for slopes greater than 3 degree so there is a formula for calculating the value of k3 for values greater than 1.0 and that is given in appendix c and basically it is more important in the hilly slopes okay now after calculating vz now we have to use this vz in this formula okay and this is used to calculate the wind pressure pz okay we have to put this pz in this formula to calculate this wind load f and f is the wind force which is equal to cpe minus cpi into exposed area into wind pressure now what is the cpe and cpi uh, these two coefficients are for external pressure and internal pressure and they depends basically on the height and plan ratio of building it is not very difficult most of the time you can easily calculate it there is a table given and in most of the cases it is provided in the question then comes the exposed area of the structural element now you can see if this is our structure then the windward side is this and you can see this is the coefficient of external pressure and this is the coefficient for internal pressure so we add or subtract depending on the signs of coefficients and then we use it in calculation of wind load okay now this is the step first of all we have to get the base wind speed vb okay and then we calculate design wind speed vz at any site and then we calculate wind pressure pz and then we identify the pressure coefficient cpi and cp e and uh, then we calculate the wind load okay so this is the example one and we are asked to calculate the force on upstream valve and it is also given there is opening in downstream phase see this opening affects the internal coefficient so this is the dimension and we can very easily calculate the plan ratio and height ratio plan ratio is 10 meter by 10 meter and height ratio is 5 meter by 10 meter so basic wind speed we have calculated for dehradun is 47 meter per second from the map and uh, if the terrain category is 3 why i have taken terrain category because dehradun is a town or city with uh, design life of 100 years i have taken it and if you see for terrain category and design life 100 years then what do you get for the value of k1 just look at this 100 years okay and 47 do you see this 1.07 okay so this value of k1 is obtained from the table equal to 1.07 now we have to calculate the terrain height factor k2 what it will be now we go to the table of k2 and we see in this table our height of building is only 10 meter what is the terrain category terrain category is 3 so we take this value 0.91 okay and we have taken 0.91 okay now the topography factor k3 is 1.0 because uh, it's a city and theta will be less than 3 degree for the upwind slope so the design wind speed is very easy to calculate and we have calculated this is the value of vz now we have calculated the design wind pressure pz is equal to 0.6 vz square and this is the value in newton per meter square then we have calculated the height ratio and plan ratio depending on that external pressure coefficient will be 0.7 and area of wall is 50 meter square whereas area of opening of the door 
which was calculated that it was larger than 20% of wall area then cpi will be also 0.7 with the minus sign okay so this calculation do not worry this will be given in most of the cases because for this we have to refer one more table okay and then we just put these two values cp e minus cpi and then area of the exposed uh, wall which is equal to 10 meter into 5 meter okay and then this is the pz and then we get the wind load finally equal to 87.95 kilonewton okay and now we come to the second numerical and here we are going to calculate the gauge length and the elongated length so in ductility test we do this percentage elongation so with the help of this formula we are trying to solve one more numerical and this numerical says if the given specimen of steel there is a specimen and it has a cross section given uh, it's 36 mm wide and 10 mm thick is tested under elongation test what should be the gauge length and what will be the elongated length after test given that percentage elongation is 25 percent now if we have a given cross section we can't take undefined length of the uh, test specimen so we take a fixed or a certain uh, length of the specimen and that length is called particularly gauge length so area of cross section we have to calculate and it is equal to 360 mm square okay and the gauge length lg will be related with this area of this cross section and if use it in the formula okay 5.65 into root under a naught now this comes out to be lg is equal to 107.2 mm okay now if we assume the elongated length of the specimen is x mm then percentage elongation will be x minus 107.2 divided by 107.2 into 100 and percentage elongation is given to you 25 percent so we just use it directly and after doing little cross multiplication we arrive to the elongated length x is equal to 134 millimeter so this numerical is very easy but yet it is one of the important numerical so that's all and we will discuss more on a new topic till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you